um, two phenomenal writers um, who really help um, weave the, the web of American literature. Uh, so first we have, um, he just said to me, Keith Lehman, who is, um, Keith Lehman, who is a black Southern writer from Jackson, Mississippi. That black Southern means a lot to him, so I wanted to make sure I let you know. Um, he comes acclaimed from writing his uh, best-selling heavy and American memoir, and also um, he's the author of a collection of essays, How to Slowly Kill Yourself and Others in America. That is a phenomenal group of essays, and if you have any young man in your life, you should get that book in their hands. It means so much. Also this evening we have Dr. Imani Perry. Um, she is an acclaimed, critically acclaimed author and a renowned Hughes Rogers Professor of American, African American Studies at Princeton University. Through her work, she goes through the complex history of what it means to be American. And in her latest uh, book that I just finished reading, um, South to America, A Journey Below the Mason-Dixon to Understand the Soul of a Nation, she does a phenomenal job really identifying what American identity means. She also has a best-selling uh, book, Breathe, and a Letter to My Sons, where she explores race, terror, and with grace and beauty and coming of age as a black person in contemporary America. Please um, give a round of applause to our two amazing literature. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Um, doubly happy to be here with Imani. Oh, yeah. Always and any time. I, I was telling folks upstairs that um, this reminds me of Jackson. Mm. <laughs> and then Jamar said, except... There ain't no potholes and <laughs> things of that nature. But thank y'all for having us. I'm super, yes. ex yeah, super excited to get into it today um, and talk. Me too. Before we begin, I just want to say um, a word of gratitude to Jamar, who is always so generous and encouraging, even beyond inviting um, me and us for events. And I also just want to say a word of thank you to Kiese, who I know will probably get tired of me saying this, but who is absolutely one of the most important people in my life as a writer. Um, I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just, you know, there are people who you know are on your side, but who also are examples of being just masters of the craft that you're pursuing. And that's, you know, that's key for me. So. <laughs> That's so funny you would say that, but um, thank you. Um, I, yeah, and, and I, I just always want to be fair when I start. You know, I think sometimes these conversations work when you do not um, idolize the person you're talking to. And that ain't what y'all going to get today. You know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> you know, like a lot of y'all out here, I know how to read and I know how to write. <laughs> and if you know how to read and write, not idolizing Imani Perry is uh, to your detriment. But I also want to say specifically, Imani came to Vassa probably in 2007? It's a long time ago. Eight, yeah. and I had been teaching uh, Prophets of the Hood in all my classes, um, whether they were hip-hop related or not. And it was just, we, we had a conversation that night about uh, black virtuoso and black virtuosity. And like that conversation carried me um, through that experience at Vassar. But also it just made me feel like, yo, Imani Perry like talked to me face to face about some ideas. Now I feel like Imani is my friend, my sister. I got Imani's back, but I still always look up to Imani. So I just going just to let y'all know it's going to be that kind of conversation. <laughs> right. It's going to be that kind of conversation. Since we're going there, I will also, <laughs> no, I will also, I will also say um, I had the chance to read and be in awe of KSA's work before the rest of the world That's did. That's true. That's a good point. And I'm, I am sometimes, and he will attest to this, too harsh a judge. <laughs> but I was like, he has it. <laughs> From the outset. I don't think outset. you're too harsh. Huh? I don't think you're too harsh. I, but you know, 
I'd be critical. You be critical, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But I mean, I don't give. I, I, one of the things I pride myself on is I don't give false praise because I right. want people able to be able to trust what I say. Yes. At the yes. deepest level. So, and it. So for me, it's like to encounter just literary brilliance, and it wasn't at the moment where everybody was like, "This is the right." G- right which right. is it was the opposite of that. Right and right. <laughs> but people I mean, were like, it was "Who just, is this?" You know. <laughs> 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 That's what happened. But I mean, you know, and that that was a gift um, that I it's something I val like I valued having the ability to see it work. So I'll start with that. Now let's talk about home a little bit. Yeah, and but I feel like we can bring that thread in the home because one of the reasons that um I realized that Imani's first text Prophet of the Hood was holy to me was because was was because hip hop and at that point particularly like West Coast and East Coast hip hop like shaped how I thought, moved, understood myself in the world. And I knew that there was some sort of movement happening in the South with hip hop, but I also knew that a lot of the music and cultures and folkways that people were talking about on the West Coast, specifically in the East Coast, too, to a different, de- different degree, had some sort of roots either in like the South that I was from, the Deep South, or like the Global South. So what Imani did is she came in there, and it wasn't for me, but Imani came in there and like kind of told me what none of my teachers up to that point had told me, which was like this thing which you have allowed to define you and give you, give you breath is even more complicated and therefore more vigorous than you thought, which means you too are. And it was really what you did with the South. So... For me, you are always going to go to the South and write what people would call a travel book. <laughs> and I'm going to say, I don't think that's what you did, but I think people call it a travel book. Yeah. And so can we start with like, what, like how you move from all of the different projects you, you do to finally saying, you know what, like I'm going to write a book that explores myself on my terms explicitly and let that undercurrent bubble up. Can we talk about that first? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk. I mean, I think part of it, this is the, this is the, the absolute sort of God's honest truth to it. I had to get to a point where somebody would, would pay me to let me do that. I, feel you. I mean, this is the book I've always wanted to write, right. but you know, along the way, and part of it is because I became an academic, and part of what I, why I became the academic is because it's not, I should not say this all the time, but it's true, is because I was afraid to be a writer. Mm. And then, <laughs> part, I mean, but I, you know, I was always going to be an intellectual, mm. but in terms of my job being mm. an academic, was that was a piece of it. And then, you know, people have very narrow conceptions of home, a place I call home, and are very resistant to telling. Like, so it either has to be, and this is part of what I'm saying, you open this up for us. You know, it's either got to be, you know, like the stereotype, the, the very, a very narrow big mama stereotype. Right. Um, it's stuck, it's, it's a place that's stuck either in 1923, 1963, something or right. other. Or you're the different kind of black person who had to get out of that confining, horrible place. Right. I mean, there's just, there's a set of stories that you get to, or it's a civil rights movement story. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's a set of stories you can tell and anything, and so it's hard to get, it was hard to feel like it was okay to get people to actually be willing to invest in me, period, as a writer. And that's just the the truth, like to get a, a contract with the big publisher yeah. is hard, right? Yeah. And I needed that to do this. Right. Um, but also the trust and it's it, and the thing that made it cruel is that it's the trust is not theirs to grant. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's how the world works. And, and, and the oddity, which is the kindest word I think I can conjure right now is that while you were trying to work up the bona fides to get there, mm-hmm. people were writing terrible ass books about oh, yeah. the South, like every other month. At- all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, people from the South, people not from the South, who, who, who I think, we, we can often say sometimes publishers do pressure you to go in the one direction. They sure do. Because yes. the understanding is that readers are not going to be able to understand this kind of thing. But coming from where we're from, this kind of thing is why we're here. Yes. Like this is, this, I mean, this it's what it in is. Delaware. It is what it, right. Can you say more about that? No, I mean, it's not, you know, so 
if you say, okay, people will say in one breath, the South is so conservative, it's so great. Then on another breath, the South is so idiosyncratic. There are right. also these great characters there. Right. They're right. Right. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't fit into a simple box. Yeah. People are strange yep. and, <laughs> and wonderful and yeah. creative and imaginative. And it is also confining. Yeah. And it is also where the biggest freedom dreams happen. Yes. And it's also where things are so violent. And it's also where people are more tender. Right. And it's also where white folks will talk to you and not hold their purses. And it's also, you know, where they're trying to keep you from voting. Yeah. And it's, it's all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it and the rest of the country can to me can can actually move in all these different directions because that's where it began. It Whatever this project, this American project is, is as complicated and funky and at times beautiful as it is. That's where it started. That's where it starts. And so you know when 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 I heard from you that you were doing this project, mm -hmm. the first thing I thought again because of the you know idolatry, which is not a good thing unless. Mm -hmm. She who was being idolized is a body, but 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 I, I, I literally I'm gonna lie. I'm, I was like, and I'm from the south, and I yeah. believe in the foals that we have. Yes. Like I think that they're foals. I think there's internality. I think there's like hidden transcripts. But I still was like, what is Imani gonna discover down <laughs> south? Because because I think of you as someone who has helped me discover so much about the place that I went back home to. I went back to Mississippi oh. to live a few years ago, and 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 Mississippi and Alabama. You know, on the map, people often confuse them, and and and, and, and I understand people, why. Right, they and people them. will say stuff like, "I've been, to, I've been to Alabama. I was in jail." <laughs> no doubt, right, right. 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 Like, actually, you were right, there. right. <laughs> and for me, from Mississippi, when they confuse, Miss, you know, every now and then they be like, I've, "I've been to Mississippi, you know, that Birmingham." And <laughs> right. and because we have like that sort of complex, I'm like, "Yeah, Birmingham, yeah, that that is part of Mississippi." <laughs> But you should try it. He to told me that, that, <laughs> uh, that Mississippi was Alabama's mama. I'm just going to say that. I mean, we still going. We got to. I mean, we are. We from the South, so we still got to like, we got to do our thing. And you it's know. true. It's true. It <laughs> but, it, yes. but, I mean, and one of the things that you've written about, you know, Mississippi's known for its writers and yes. Alabama's known for its. Football players. Football players. Which always <laughs> struck me as weird because there's so many incredible writers, yeah. and one of them that, that 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 influenced me directly, we do try to jack from you, who is Margaret Walker. Yes, the great. The great. Yeah. And and what I and, but I love when you step up and be like, y'all can't have her. <laughs> we can share her. Right. Yes. But can we just? But, but I think we can start yes. this conversation maybe talking a bit about what the history of Southern black writers in Alabama did for you and, and sure. what you attempted to do differently with South to America. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yes. But I do. And I want to get back actually to long division to talk about place and okay. movement. Okay. Right. Because, um, but yeah, so, so, um, right. There's not this, it's, it's actually, it's interesting. Alabama is not known for art period, mm. right? So when people talk about Sun Ra, for example, they mm -hmm. talk about Philly or maybe mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, or when, or, and so one of the things, and we have this incredible visual art tradition, right? Incredible yes. black visual art tradition. Like you won't find a book like Alabama's Black Artists. Right. Right. But it's, it's uncanny. Yard artists, I mean, so it goes from G's Ben to sort of to Lonnie Holly yard artists, people like Jack Witten, fine artists. I mean, it, it's a huge tradition. Yeah. I think it has something to do with the, the, the term that Fred Wesley used, which I'm always turning over my head. Fred Wesley was James Brown's side man. Mm -hmm. And he used to talk about being in the band and all, you know, all these, all these people from Georgia, and they always wanted to wear these costumes and like, like kind of <laughs> be out there. And he would be like, no, nah, I'm not wearing that. He's from Alabama. He right. said, I'm Alabama conservative. <laughs> right. Right? Right. Right. And it is a thing. It is a thing. It is a thing about, like, you know, comportment. Like, I remember going to school and being like, wait, everybody else doesn't wear girdles, right? And, mm -hmm. and I, would, I weighed, like, and this is 1990, and I weighed, like, 110 pounds mm -hmm. soaking wet and thought I was supposed to wear a girdle. Right? And, and there's a, there is a sense of, like, that – you know, no excess. And I think that there, I think the fact that Mississippi is um, blacker right. and more connected to the earth because mm. more, and 
that there is a more expansiveness in everyday being that yeah. allows for people to see the art and also music. Right. Right, because so much of Alabama's music tradition went up to Detroit. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. so, when you talk, so Motown, that's Alabama, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. But it's associated with Detroit, right? Right. But I, so I think that there's there's a piece of it there. But I do like someone like Albert Murray. Yes. Who is I call him my tar baby. I haven't been saying that in interviews because that could get funky in this political landscape. Yeah, but but we hear it. Right. But right. He, he, I can't get unstuck from him, yeah. even though politically. I don't agree with Murray, but what his attentiveness to composition, his use of the jazz idiom and the blues idiom in his writing, both his uh, nonfiction and fiction, like that is very, it, it, not only do I love his work, but it feels very resonant, right. right? So like from my house in Birmingham, you can walk to Tuxedo Junction where Erskine Haw Hawkins was. You can also walk to Sun Ra's home. And Sun Ra doesn't put on the costumes till he leaves, but the imagination is already right, there. Right, that's right, that's yeah. right. I think that means so much. And, and Murray, you know, one of the things you did in South to America that I, that, that, I, that I think we needed to see done on a larger scale is not that Murray needed rescuing, but I feel like you rescued Murray from these poles that we yeah. also, you know, like politically, like, yeah, politically yeah. people. I mean, I mean, and, and I think there's a lot to critique about Murray's. Um, um, you know, so, you know, some sometimes less than radical politics. <laughs> right. Don't we can't be called black. Right. Right. right, right. For example, right. Yes. But but the way Murray wrote about home, I mean, the first essay that I ever wrote, like I'm quoting Murray because I felt like Murray was actually talking about what our charge was, was to, which was to take this art, this mysterious, complicated art and not be mimetic, not not imitate it the yes. same way that they had done it. But, but ask ourselves, is there anything worthy in this art that you can use to mine your funky, crazy-ass yes. black Southern experience? And I feel like we cannot, no matter what you think of Albert Murray, you have to give Murray that. credit for that. Yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And he decide like, I just, I'm constantly reading him trying to figure out how, because he wrote almost everything in the second person, that, like the essays. And I just, it's such mastery, it's, right? It's, it's, yeah. And yeah, I'm not trying yeah. to write in the second person, right. but I, he made a choice about his art, his form, and right. he just did it. Right. At the high, and that sensibility right. of like to model, I'm going to take on this style and I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And I don't care how many people say you never write this way. Right, right. Right, that, that lesson too. But this is also why I wanted to return to, I know like, I, like everybody, I absolutely love heavy, and I know that's what you get talked get asked about <laughs> most frequently, and I know people will want to talk about that, but I also, I want to talk about long division for this particular reason. Like, for me, it was such an affirmation as a text because it's because of the time travel piece, yeah. because people don't often think of the Deep South in particular, and places like Alabama and Mississippi in particular as places for black futures. And, and it drives me crazy because for people who are enslaved, right, if we go, who imagined freedom, right. what, that's, that's Afrofuturism. Yeah. Like, it's the grounds of it. It is. The future, like, and then the freedom movement. Right. Right, and so you, you are putting us on the grounds and then helping us understand how it remains the site of futurism. Yeah, I, I, I hope I'm doing that. Um, but, I, but I also must say that I, I, I feel like I wrote that book <laughs> with a naive understanding of why folks did not understand that we were the future. Do you know what I'm saying? Like as okay. much as we as much as we have always been connected to this antiquated anachronistic understanding of human being, they're slower, they're fiftieth and everything. Like I grew up in Jackson, Mississippi. I went to stadiums that were filled with sixty thousand black people to watch people named Jerry Rice, um a little, little bit after I was born, Walter Payton, who's my cousin, like perform Sweet, this is your cousin. Sweet, I yeah, we Payton. I'm a Payton. We Paytons. We Paytons. <laughs> But the illest thing about it is that, like, as, as incredible as those people are, unquestionably, those are, like, the most incredible NFL players in the world, fam, we were there for that halftime show. 
because mm-hmm. it it took it 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 if you can take somebody to the future privately like we were that's where we went you know what i'm saying the sonic boom of the south was like it it was fu- it literally was futuristic to us so this notion and because that was the culture i grew up in and again you grow up down south where we grew up you're gonna straddle like you know i straddled jackson and i straddled the rural rural forest mm-hmm. you, you you did some straddling yourself the Huntsville, yeah. yeah and so so for so for us like the idea of us i i, I just didn't understand why folks thought we were so backwards um, when when we had the J sets, you know what I'm saying? When we had Margaret Walker, when we had when we had I know y'all had Margaret Walker too, but we had when we had you know right to a different degree who people I still think write poorly about. I, I it, it did so badly. About I mean, it. so badly about right. So so I'm saying all this to say, on one hand, I, I love that I was from a place where it is a completely black place where black people always say hi to each other, which means your neck is always you know you your shit is you know. Yes. You, mm-hmm. It's fuck, your neck is going to get fucked up because you're going to see black people all the time, but you're always going to say, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm all right. Hey, how you doing? Um, and then you go other places that you've been told are more progressive, and they might be, but the motherfuckers won't even look at you. Right. That, that to me did Avoid not seem... Avoid looking at you. Huh? Avoid, Avoid looking, at looking at you. But let you bring a dog on a subway, and, and, and so for me, that did not seem futuristic. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I, think, I, think if there's any, I think if we're on this stage... For a lot, I think, and I think a lot of us has to do with movement and being children of a movement, which I think you explore so well. I think it's because whatever they said about us that completely ran opposite to what I saw, what I heard, what my mom and them taught me, I just never believed. I don't think you can write a book like Long Division if you believe what these folks say about us. And I know you can't write a book like South to America if you believe what they say about the South. Well, right. I mean, and I think this is part of why for me putting. Um, when I went to Cuba, and I, part of the reason I had to put Cuba in it, even though there is, is because, not just because, the story of like black revolutionaries yeah. exiled to Cuba, people don't talk about that as a Southern story. It's overwhelmingly with black Southerners yes. who escaped the United States government to Cuba, but also to speak with someone who was actually a New Yorker, but who talked about Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, when you make that Cuba move in the book, see, this is what I'm saying, now it's going to seem like fawning, but, but, but the move was so incredible to me also because, again, like, this is not, these, these are not my words, but, you know, the first folk who were brought into these chicken plants that were at one point majority run by black, run, like, like, like Labor, labored yeah. by black women, my grandmother being one, were people they called exclusionary aliens from Cuba. Yeah. They were from they, they were from Cuba. Like 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 running away from polit- like like seeking political asylum and they happened to come and live right next door to us in the trailer park and then they came to the trailer and then they came to the chicken plant and they started working for wages that were lower than they should have been and then the black folk and the and the and they called them Mexican folk but they were Cubans they actually got into a beef. But my point was like we rarely see a conversation of American Souths that really in, like intimately involves the importance of Cuba. Yeah. And and you had to do that. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah. And also I want to, and listen, I don't, how do I say this? <laughs> when we talk, there's, there are different, the, the South is a place where you can never forget mm-hmm. that the history of European settlement of this place right. did not begin with the British. Right. Right. So, you know, yes, 1619 is super significant, so is 1520. Right. You know, they were battling, these empires were battling for global domination, yes. and they fought each other on right. the land of the South. That's why I'm always saying, like, have you ever thought about why so many black Southern women are named Juanita? Mm. <laughs> right? Mm. I mean, it's. I mean, you could do a whole. I've never written, but I don't. That's that's like a, a quip, but it's true. <laughs> but but there is like Spanish, right. French. Like there's a lot all through the South, right? I was I was at a dinner in New Orleans recently, and the man I was talking to was like, I said, "Where are you from?" He said, "Port Arthur," and I was like, "Port Arthur, Texas," and, you know, because I was yeah. both both yeah. Um, and he said, "Yeah," and we didn't grow up speaking English. We spoke a we spoke a a, a dialect of French and in my Port Arthur. So so for, for those yeah. who don't know, like Port Arthur is where UGK. I mean, that's UGK where um, that's where Bombay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Right, 
And then he said, yeah, and I would, you know, so, but, but like those things, you know, that made places. Right. And so Cuba is part of the making, you know, and you, but I said, Bart could be, could have been Barbados, right. could have been Nigeria. Like there's this movement in and out yeah. that has never ceased. And that's part of why it's so terrible that people talk about that as a place. It's backwards. It's a binary. It's a, like this idea that it's not, somehow the South is not cosmopolitan. Right. That it's not complex. Right. All that stuff. Right. right. So it's both. It's the past and the future and the present at once. And it's the whole world. And, and, and what you push is that it's like you counter this argument that, that folks have made explicitly and definitely implicitly that Appalachia is not actually part of mm -hmm. our South. Yeah. And t talk about like what it took to actually bring that into the book if you could oh yeah i mean part of it to be completely honest was i was so disoriented when i found i was doing genealogy which i'm which is an enterprise i'm suspicious of anyway right we, politically speaking like i just i, I think know. the past belongs to all of us like right. i don't you know so when i say like i cite you know a black person from the 18th century and i'm moved by them i don't think i have to have a biological relationship right. to them to feel that their story belongs to me yes. so that's why i'm suspicious of Appalach of of um genealogy but then i found this ancestor and it says she was born in maryland in 1769 i was like what is this right and like because i just i just assumed when i would go back it was like, born in africa right right, right? And, <laughs> and not only was it saying she was born in maryland said her parents were born in maryland right and then I went on another route, and then I found all these mountain folks. I have all these mountain people as my ancestors. I love that shit. And I, <laughs> and I don't even know why I love it, but, but, but I think that there's something about, I don't know where the brother is, but we were about, when I got into the elevator with the brother, um, I said, fam, where you from? And the brother was like, Jersey. And you know, when you're from the South like us, we're like... Where you, really, where, 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 where you really? Where you really from? And he was like, uh, he said he named another part of Jersey. <laughs> and then I said, I said again, I said, no, fair, but but you know what I'm saying before that. And he was like, I don't know. But I think that that speaks so much to 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 like also this desire. It might be specifically Mississippi, right? Like. I want to believe we are all from Natchez. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I want all of us. I remember when I, 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 I went to this college in Mississippi. I got kicked out. I went to school at Oberlin. It was the first time I, I'd gone to school with black folk who were not, you know, who weren't of the Deep South, right? Because the people in Oberlin were from Chicago. They were from New York. Um, or they were literally from the continent. Um, and, and, and so, like, to hear people talk about their lineages as not being rooted in the deep, deep South is still shocking to me. And, 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 that, and that, that speaks to my ignorance. But I love the way your book explores it and also elucidates a fact. Right. Like, this is fact. This is not. No, it's fact. And it's, you know, and it's, for me, it's really interesting because intellectually, obviously, I know the deep South was not settled until right. like the beginning of the 19th century. <laughs> right. But emotionally. Yeah. Not at least not our part of the, you know, there's South Carolina and yeah. Georgia and, yeah. and, but, but there's, so that for me, it was like, oh, right. People were brought down. Yeah. People didn't just, people were brought down before they went up. Back up. Yes. And it's disorienting because the, and honestly, I don't know better. I don't have a, a academic way of saying, or an intellectual way of saying it's the earth mm. made the soil made who we were to become in a way that mm. feels like it couldn't have been anything before except mm. across the ocean. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I think that's emotionally what's, what's, what's happening um, for me, but also I'm always interested in the Jersey thing. Yeah. Because, you know, Baldwin said when they asked him, <laughs> when, when you first go South, he was like, well, Jersey, Jersey was my first time going South. And as a right? Southerner, when I read that, I literally <laughs> thought, I mean, I literally thought that was a typo. Right. <laughs> I mean, because I'm from we, we from we from we from a different kind of South, I guess, than Jersey, right? <laughs> right. Like the real South. And anyway, and 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 and, and Baldwin writes in uh, in notes, right? Yeah. Know some and, uh, know some Native son. You know, when I went down South, and I'm like, <laughs> what could this mean? <laughs> right. But it meant everything. It meant everything. And I wonder if you could, like keep segregation. About, yeah. Formal segregation. Um, you know, racial violence, right? Having to figure out how he was going to navigate this space where right. he was humiliated at, at, at 
at every turn. And also, Jersey had a longer protracted end to slavery. Mm-hmm. Right, it had a mm-hmm. much more intense color line. You can, st- it, you know, you can still see it in Princeton. Right. There's a street you go down, Witherspoon Street, and you can see where the black folks lived. Wow. Right, and it's still, and it still is, it's visible still in many ways. And I once took, I took a bus down to um, the beach in Delaware one year, and the bus so. went on, and the bus went through these South Jersey towns. Right. And stopped at half like, you know, some of the stops were halfway house stops because it wasn't like a great. It was like a and I was like, oh, yeah, this is it's country. It's not southern, but it's it's country. It's right. Was um, and it was also like hard scrabble living. Yeah. Yeah. And people were fussing on the bus. Right. About the kind of the kind of fussing I had not heard in that. Like, you know, you came. Why are you come by my house? Ah, looking for some crap. Like, right, I mean, kind of right, things, conversations right, right. are so absurd. I wouldn't even ever describe them to people who hadn't been in the South because they'd be like, who's, you know, fussing on the bus about <laughs> crack? <laughs> right, right, you right, know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I do know what you mean. And and, and it seemed to me, um, you know, and, and, and that Baldwin piece, like Baldwin, like then dramatizes a scene that one expects to see in Alabama or Mississippi. And it's so right? brilliant. Yeah. And I mean it's so brilliant and, 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 and he ultimately despises this person for not like for not doing exactly what, what a racist white person like sh- like he, he's so much seemed like just step into it. Like yeah. don't 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 step around and step into it. I wanna talk about mm. the decisions you make as an artist who's doing this book as opposed to the decisions you make um, as an actual uh, like, uh, like, like, uh, mover through the South, right? Mm-hmm. So, 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 so it's one. It's one thing to write a book where you move through the South and you chronicle every movement. It's another thing to write a book where you're you're looking at you're, you're going here, you're experiencing here, and then you're deciding what bit is going to get this much space. Yeah. What bit is going to come back and reverb? Like, and, and I'm just saying, like, in the writing of the book, what did you discover that was different than the actual like visitation oh. of the book? So much. Yeah. I mean, it was just because you can't, it wasn't going to be enough to just tell what things that happened. Right. Because the point is that through, through repetition, through echoes, like, I, you know, I'm going to give some exa- like, like for me to talk about, you know, the Clotilda, which has become, there's now a film about, you know, the, the, the la- what's called the last slave ship, although we don't really know that, mm-hmm. but in Mobile, Alabama, or at Mobile Bay, and they, then the, the Africans created a town called Africa Town where they stayed after, and there's, just a, and there's been, Ben Rains has a book out that's about the, the discovery of the trip, he's Howell Rains' son, Howell Rains was a long-term writer for the New York Times, but also about civ- the civil rights movement, who's from my neighborhood in Birmingham. Um, white man, and that's another. This story about white flight. <laughs> mm-hmm. We are literally mm-hmm. from around the corner from each other, but there were no white people around by the time I was mm-hmm. born. Um, and so, I wanted to think about this question of what does it mean to be Af- for Africans to be in Alabama. So, to tell the story of the Clotilda was also to tell the story of the visual artist Toyino Gio Dutola, who was grew up in Huntsville with my cousins who right. is now like a huge artist but is known as an as an Igbo and Yoruba artist Damn. or Toby Ngwiwe who is a you know <laughs> musician from who's a rapper and a musician from Houston mm-hmm. who is so Houston so Houston right and also African yes and that because the point was about encounter because so much of the South is about different encounters right. and structures, which is similar to the point, the repetition of the, of the chicken yeah. plants, right? Because the parties change, the relation is set Absolutely. between the people who work in the plant and the people who own it and then the people who are scuffling at times against each other. That's what it is, right. right? And so, to sort of, so the structurally what I was trying to do is figure out how the structure could make certain points as opposed to making an argument. Yes. Right? That's a big deal, though. That's a big deal. So I mean, I think it's a big deal for any of us, but I also think it's a big deal for you, one who yeah. so many people associate with making arguments. Yeah, because that's 
that's my job as right. a professor. <laughs> but but I right. wonder if you could talk about how the narrative actually does not just make an argument, but sort of like 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 does it's this to an argument? Yeah, because yeah, it turns it upside down. Because yeah. because that's the other thing too. I am I'm bored, frankly, by the books that are like, go here and I'm gonna tell you what to see here. Right. Partially because I always see something different. Right. And also because, of course, we see things that are different, right? And that the point to me is much more, what's the tension? Mm -hmm. What's the repetition of the tension? What's the difficulty? Why do we, fall, why do we turn back on ourselves? Yeah. Why do we eat our entrails? Right. Right? Why are we, like, this is the thing for me about sugar in the book. And this is actually part of what, what made heavy so important to me because I was like well god damn I've never read a book that that actually tells the truth about our relationship to food the sugar, yeah yeah ever and sugar specifically you get that in that book yeah but I, you know like what it means like so when my grandmother used to tell me you know when I would have cornflakes baby put some more sugar on there right right and if I tell that as an in a scholarly way so, oh the you know, the addiction to sugar and like the, you know, bad eating habits of the black southerner, right? <laughs> right. Which was not true because we also had vegetables every right. day, right? But also that's not what was happening, right? What was happening is she was saying to me, I want you to have something sweet in your life. That's it. That's it. And you deserve more, right? And that, um, you know, I, I couldn't, make that as an argument it doesn't work as an argument yeah right i mean you just have to you know, so trying to but it, you can't just you can't just tell the story and expect that's the other thing you tell the story and expect people which is why circularity ellipt, being elliptical repetition is important because right. people will pass by something that they don't like in heartbeat it's like when people the way people read um I know why the cage bird sings. You read, people will read that book and be like, oh, it's so, it's so terrible that she didn't, my Andrew didn't have a, a supportive family. Do they kill somebody for right. the baby? I mean, <laughs> right? they got them. <laughs> right? yeah. But people will read it and say, and you think, how can you be such irresponsible readers? Right. And it's because of the power, it's frankly just the power of racism in yeah. our society. Right? Of course right. she didn't have a family that loved her. Black people's families don't love them. Right. Right? right. But so to try to figure out navigating the particular nature of white supremacy in this moment had and created an urgency for me in the form. Mm -hmm. Knowing and, that it also will fail in some level and just still it's worth trying. It, but to me, to me, Imani, there's just such a, there's such a need for innovative form exploration particularly because of where we come from, the straddling, mm -hmm. you know, and what we saw in Big Mama's room, mm -hmm. um, you know. So, so <laughs> I think it's okay if, if I get weird up here with you. Um, but, you know, my, 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 we, we grew up in a 700-square-foot in a, in a, in a pink shotgun house up on cinder blocks. Mm -hmm. And by the time I come around... It's just my grandma and me, because I'm sent to live with my grandma when my mama can't, can't deal with me. Um, and, you know, my mama had, my grandmama had her room, and then the kids, all five of them had their room, right? And you've written about this before, you know, three or four this way, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. two or three this way, and then, you then, and then we got to talk about the cousins who came in, to, and we had to take care <laughs> right. of them. But one of the things that your book made me remember was that my grandmama who worked in a chicken plant who was going to be the freshest woman at the chicken plant no matter what who was going to be the freshest usher at the church no matter what um, was also someone who kept her sugar cane in the same closet that she kept her fly dresses the sugar cane the sugar cane and so this, no, this, so this notion of like oh baby you so sweet or isn't that so sweet I'm not trying to be like somebody who takes takes language too seriously when I say that like sweetness is a part of why we are here and when we do that thing that I understand why we do which is when we could critique our um, apparent addictions to sugar without also minding where those um, 
necessitated ex uh, uh, experiences with sugar come from. I just feel like what, what are we doing but further misreading the people who made us here? And, and, and I'm saying that as a writer. I have not figured out a way to write about sugar cane in that room in, in ways that honor my grandma. I, I, I just, I don't know how. But, you know, after grandmama ate her donuts and shared her donuts and after grandmama may, might have eaten, you know, <laughs> her little Neapolitan ice cream, for that you know the apology so good <laughs> it was it was it was it was it was it was baby let's go out on the porch i go out on the porch she would cut my cane so i wouldn't have to eat around it those of y'all who know cane like you know you can cut that shit where you get a whole lot of like the worst part in your mouth yeah. She would cut it so where I could just like you know the sweetness, and so again it, it's very it's very easy to be saccharine about our grandmothers too because I think our grandmothers have been written about so saccharinely, but 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 I but I but I do not think it is mythologizing to say that like sweetnesses yes. are why we here absolutely and meant something completely different than people think absolutely yeah yeah I, yeah. I want to say oh that. I love that and then, you know for me that hits in part because sugarcane was rare right. for us right. Like it was a, it was like, it was rare. Yeah. Right. And so it was like a thing that you learned about where you came from when you had some. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I think, and that's the, you know, that's the, that is one of the, I mean, like, and you know, Birmingham is not Atlanta, but had Atlanta like aspirations at yeah, one point. Right. And so it has this distance I from, like that. you know I like what that. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Atlanta like aspirations and and and, you know, and, I, and I feel like you know we don't have to talk about Atlanta in this conversation, but it might be important to talk about Atlanta yeah, a little sure. bit just a, a little bit since since um some people seem to to, to believe that it is the south they do um, which is funny <laughs> which is which that's very funny to me but but I, I wonder if we can talk also then about like what what your ex not what your writerly experience of writing about Atlanta was you know i mean. Because like when that part of the book to me, ironically, is where the most mastery comes in of the form. <laughs> y'all want this? I know you want this, but I'm gonna give you this, and I'm gonna give you all of this context. Yeah. And the, and the context I'm gonna give you is enough for you to go in and, and and see and feel different parts of Atlanta. But still, as the quote unquote capital of the South, it almost feels like sometimes people expect all of us who are not from Atlanta to give it the same space, whether or not we give it the same rigor or not. You gave it an incredible amount of rigor. It just doesn't mean that it gets a, no. yeah, same space. Right. I mean, it's so funny. Years ago, somebody from Boston said um, to me, he was going to move to Atlanta because people told him Atlanta was a black New York, right? <laughs> right? So he moved to Atlanta and he came back and he's like, ah, this was nothing like New York. Right. And I was like, yeah, because Atlanta's not the black New York, it's black LA. It's the black LA. Right, and it's that, <laughs> right, it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. And, it's and, it's all, <laughs> and it's also a historic city. I mean, it's not, it is, it's late, just, I mean, in many, but that's also true in California. There's a lot under, you know, when, when I read, when I read, because I did a lot of rereading, right, and I teach Souls of Black Folk, Du Bois' Souls of Black Folk, 93, almost every single year, often in multiple classes. When I reread and I thought, Du Bois in 1903 had the same experience going to Atlanta that I did in 86 and 88, where he was like, what is happening here? Right. <laughs> right. Like, and then Baldwin has, when James Baldwin said, I have never felt more uncomfortable than with rich black people in Atlanta. People forget he said it. People forget he said it. He's like, I don't understand this right. place. <laughs> right? right. So I think that that's... There's something important there yeah. about its brand of aspiration and that its brand of aspiration cuts across the lines of what we think of as respectability. Absolutely. Its brand of aspiration, the music industry, is also its brand of civil rights aspiration. I go crazy every time I watch TV and people say that Atlanta is the cradle of the civil rights movement. It drives me bananas. But what's happening is that Atlanta filters other parts of the South, and it does bring them into a kind of spectacular yeah. space. Yeah. Right? Gucci yeah. Man, if he hadn't gone to Atlanta, we wouldn't know his name. Well, right. I would know his name. Because he's from Best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Right? So there's something, there's something magical that happens there. It is, there's something as part of why in the end of the chapter, I'm like, there's something that's so nice. You go into these fancy hotels and lounges and all the fancy black people and everybody's cute. And there is something like, ooh, <laughs> this is nice. Right. And it's also, though, that if you walk beyond right. the, the malls in the downtown and you see the kids who look just like we looked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, like growing up in Mississippi, Atlanta was a destination. Birmingham was a destination, Memphis destination. But Atlanta was seen as a destination, but much more than a destination because of the way race and racism worked right. and because of the fact that we wanted to um, create our own mm -hmm. spectacles. Like Freaknik was a thing. Oh, yeah, it was a huge thing. You know? I mean, oh, and, and Freaknik yes. was Atlanta for, for like little teenagers in, the, in, 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 in Louisiana. I mean, literally Atlanta was Freaknik. Now, <laughs> the, we, if we're going to talk about Freaknik, we, we should talk about like, like all of the um, violence and yeah, assault right, that sure, happened right, right. In, in, in Freaknik. Yes. And I think we need to talk about why so many of our folks thought we could go there when we couldn't go to some of those beaches on the coast. Do you know? And, oh, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. And, and, it's unsafe, and, yeah. It was unsafe, yeah. which... But not like freaking Right, safe. which is... Which is <laughs> not like freaking. it was, was black safe, unsafe. <laughs> but like, the, it, it, it was... I, 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 I remember when the schools, you know, when I went to white school for the first time, and all these kids started talking about going to Destin. And I, uh, and, oh, that's and, 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 hilarious. Or, and I thought they yeah. were saying Dustin. Yeah. You know, I was like, <laughs> Dustin? Like... You know, where, where is Dustin? Where they would talk about going down to, to literally like the south of Mississippi, which is the coast, which is a place that other than New Orleans, I never went. And then, and then, and then, and then my friend was like, fam, that's their freak Nick. Yeah. And then I was like, no. Like, yeah. <laughs> that could not be their freak Nick. Yeah. Like, are, are they doing freak Nick? And, and, and then you, what you find out is that is their freak Nick. But do you, isn't it, do you have, because my younger cousins will go, go to Destin or Daytona. All, they go to those now. places now. Now, yeah, yeah absolutely like, now. Oh, yeah. But and part of that is because they ki I mean they effectively killed they Freaknik, killed Freaknik right. right? Which 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 while while one wants to believe it has to do with like some of the assaults that were happening and yeah. some of the violence, like we haven't seen another white like uh, beach town or, or celebratory space like no. that. Literally, like like ended right ended. It's over. Right, and those places are also violent. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. I wonder, are you looking at us? Go ahead. Two more do minutes, we we'll do Q, we do Q and A. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> but can I, okay, can I, can I ask one more question? Uh -huh. Okay. So, so, so the, the one more question that I want to ask that I think I've never asked you um, in, 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 in person, or maybe I've asked you in person, is this. Uh-oh. So, so, so I have this dream. That, 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 that those of us who see the South in particular peculiar ways and have been inspired by the South will possibly in our old age, older age for me, find a way to make um, actual home 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 in the south yes and and you 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 explore this in the book but i want and for, for, for those of you who have not gotten south to america you, you got to get it but i want you if possible to talk about like in you know this is a space this is a spot this made you its richness is apparent and you've chosen to live a southern life in a different part of the nation partially i think i know the answer to this question but can you talk about that Yes. I mean, you know, when I read Jasmine's piece about going home, yeah. I wept. Yeah. I was like, man. <laughs> right, right? Like, yeah. Um, and, you know, I thought, it's funny, I did think about moving to Atlanta, like, a lot a couple right. years ago. Like, I even, I looked at schools for my children, I looked at houses, right. like, I thought about it really hard, um, which is interesting of all the places. But it feels, not only does it feel... Um, essential, it feels necessary, it feels like, I mean, I talk about my dad in the book, and it was one of the things, like, before he died, he was yes. like, you gotta go home. Yes. He's from Brooklyn. Yeah. But he was like, you need to go, because he understood that that, it's, and it wasn't, I mean, I do think there's a piece that's about giving back to the place that created you, but it's also about being able to be whole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but there's all these things about the way my life has been constituted, which is probably more of my business that I want to share on For stage. Sure. Absolutely. But, that, but, but absolutely. And I think that it is, it's important, though, because... For all the reasons that we've talked about, because right. people don't understand how much dreaming happens there. It's important right. because it still gets cut out yeah. of so much. Like when I, I'm just going to say this really quickly. I don't get kids from the South at Princeton. I don't get black kids from the South. Wow. Ever. Wow. Almost ever. I'm, now I'm getting more kids from the Midwest, uh -huh. which has changed my experience. Yes. So it's like I don't, you know... There's all these resources at this place, and I don't even, and they call it the Southern Ivy. Yeah. Because they, you know, because people used to bring their slaves there. Right. <laughs> to, I mean, they did. True. So, the first, right. gra the, uh, you know, one of their presidents, who, what's his name? Madison. Mm -hmm. President Madison, he brought he brought, he brought an enslaved person to Princeton with him when he was a graduate mm -hmm. student, and he also brought one to the Constitutional Convention. The one who he brought to Princeton remained enslaved. The one he brought to Philly for the Constitutional Convention got too headstrong, and so he emancipated mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just feel like this is a powerful story it is about a powerful the place. Story. <laughs> and, 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 and I feel like the book also like, com compellingly makes the argument that like, you know, if you must go south to America, you all you kind of always are in the south to well, a different degree. You are. It's just when people don't know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> you get a lot of confusion. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, sorry. That was so long. Wow. What a scintillating uh, conversation. Does anybody, does anybody have any questions? We love questions. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try to ask a question and not ask an answer. But uh, so I don't I don't have a sense of home, and I guess it, by that I mean I, I'm untethered, right? Um, but I also like grew up in the streets of everywhere, you know. Um, but reading you both feels like what I imagine home is supposed to feel like, right? Um, not just because you write about home, as in you know, and you and home is established in place, but mostly because home, you, you both write about movement so often. And I feel like for me, that's where the home exists. For you, personally, I guess personally, historically, phenomenally, how much of home is concretized in the movement itself? Yeah, we didn't get to that. Um, <laughs> which is, which is, which is, which is weird because that's that's sort of why we why why we are here. Um, Hence our names. <laughs> yes, li literally. Hence our names. But I also want to say there's a, there's a book coming out that we both adore called "The Movement Made Us" by David Dennis uh, uh, Senior, who 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 literally like came to my state and 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 fought to to, to make edu equitable, ed equ equitable radical education possible. And David Dennis uh, Junior, who is doing his version of that with the pen today. So I mean, the, for me, I, I I because of my mama and my father was in the Republic of New Africa when I was born. Um, like it, it like I it, it is hard for me to think about Mississippi specifically without without understanding that it it is. It is a movement space. Do you see what I'm saying? So even when they, so 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 we could talk about the fact that you know our mayor Chokwe Lumumba is is you know in some way has the most radical platform of any mayor in in the country. That's one way to talk about. It. But another way to talk about a talk about it as a movement space is the fact that there's one abortion clinic in my state, right? Like we, I think we all in this room know when those folk do that, they do that they do that because the fear of a particular movement is so strong. Do you know what I mean? So, so the fact that, like, you know, when I grew, up, when I was in college, and we used to do these um, uh, clinic defenses and whatnot at that at that place, and we never thought of, at you know year five, two, six years from now that would be the only abortion clinic. My my point is like, we can talk forever about the importance of racial movements, but also, I, I don't, I, I I cannot imagine Mississippi without imagining movement spaces and that's because of my mama you know what i mean my mama had me 1970s my father has me he becomes a member of the republic of new africa my mama becomes um 
campaign advisor for all of these black elected officials um, in Mississippi. Jesse Jackson comes to our house, starts trying to flirt with my mama in this weird, crazy way. I'm like, damn, Jesse, like, come on, bro. Uh, <laughs> but, but beyond that, but beyond that, like, this, 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 the notion of organic self-determination is still what you're going to hear people talking about in Jackson today. It's what they were talking about years ago. But, and, and as the our movement has gotten, like, stronger um, um, uh, and, and, and actually teethier, those folks have come back harder every single fucking time, bruh. So, so, so I'm saying, I can't imagine Mississippi or my Jackson without movement, which goes back to the first thing Imani said. Like, I live in a movement space. And most, a lot of the kids that I grew up with are, are, are literally dissuaded from moving now because of the backlash of that movement space. Be they in jails, be they in other places where they can't move, but I understood early that like these folk did not want us to move. So it was like, how do you tell the truth and evade? And 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 it's it's just hard, right? I mean, it's just it's just it's just hard to live in a movement space when the counter movement will will eat itself just to see you suffer. And white folk in Mississippi will eat they well, they will eat the fuck out of their own chest just at the idea that they can get to us. We can talk about it in other kind of like blah blah blah. Like that's what they do. So once you know you're living in a space like that, and those people that will eat, them ch eat that chest will see you in the street and be like, hey, KSA, how you doing there, bro? Like this idea that like the northern people up here are so nice and down. So, you, know, you know that? It's just like the opposite. You know? If I, if I get a flat tire, I don't worry about getting a flat tire in Mississippi because I know some red, red, redneck motherfucker with a truck, with a, with a gun, he's going to come and help my ass out, right? And then he's going to vote and make sure my, stu my, my, my little girl doesn't have clean water. And he's going to walk through my, my little girl's school to vote that she doesn't have clean water. And then he's going to come back out there and say, hey. That, so when you live in a space like that, you can't, you, can't, you can't think about that you ain't in a movement space. That's a movement space to me. So, so I have a question for Professor Perry, but Mr. Lehman, you certainly can weigh in. So I wanted to ask you in your research for your book if you – encountered any feelings of either division between North and South um, people of color or black people or feelings of otherness. And I ask because I was born in Texas, specifically Port Arthur, so thanks for the shout out. But when I was very young, my mom and her mom moved me and my siblings north. But we would still, you know, go back in the summers to see my dad, his mom, and all of my mom's family that still lived in the Houston area and the Port Arthur area. But we were always, I mean, my family embraced us and loved us, but we were always made to feel other. We were from the North. We talked funny. We talked white. All, you know, for all these reasons, I always was made to feel other. So I still claim Port Arthur, but I never felt Southern. And I don't know if you ever experienced anything like that. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't have that experience, but I think I... I appreciate your sharing it. I think it's important to tell the fullness of that experience. Of the, and I have been attributing it to the fact that my family didn't migrate. You know, so my family has always and will probably always be overwhelming in the South. But, it, but that may not be, your story makes me think that might not actually be what it was. I, I, it may have been because my grandmother was my primary caretaker. When I was young, like I stayed at her house, so it wasn't so like, and they would call like, "Hey, so you are our baby," because my because my they would be like, "Cause your parents were always trying to go start a revolution someplace, <laughs> right?" So, and I do think, but I do feel that the division. Um, I mean, one of the things I actually had to work through as I was writing, I had you know, I have a I've had a bone to pick to be completely honest, with black people in lots of parts of north, the north, which in the south means every place is not the south, right? So even the Midwest is the north, California is the right. north. Um, but I've had a bone to pick because I spent my life having people, oh, you going down there? I'm scared to go down there. What are you going to be, you know, feeding chickens? And I'm like, okay, well, Birmingham is, oh, yes, there's chickens next door, <laughs> but, <laughs> right, there's, you know, and so I felt, very 
I've always I always felt very defensive about the description of it, like as a backwards place or as a place. Even Jim Jones had a, a recent personal debacle in public, and I saw people respond. He's from New York. He's a rapper from New York, and people resp responded with his situation. What in Alabama, right? Because his pre family, like this, almost um, this depiction of right. anything that is backwards, anything that is retrograde, and so. I, I, but what I had to do was actually, and my son is the one who said, like, you can't, this can't be all, like, you can't just tell all the beautiful parts, mom. Like, it's, you can't just, this can't just be a defensive book, right? right? You have to, and that, um, and so how to do that um, was, comp so the, yeah, so, so I would say I didn't, what I felt was, like, I missed out. Um, and I also felt homesick my whole life. Yeah. I never stopped feeling homesick, which I think for me is partially. But I also wanted to re respond to the previous question, too, because part of that, when I wasn't home, books were, did function like home because I could go home in books. And I think that that's really important because you make home... You know, because we like I have a part where I talk about sweet home, murderous home. Home can be really, really funky and awful everywhere, every part of the the world, and that making home is something that we make in part not just through the fact of what it is, but through the creation of boundaries, through finding one's people. Like you know, it's not it's should we should not romanticize home, right? Ever. Some people, some few precious people in the world have an easy home experience. Most of us don't. You know. So this, this question stymies every, every guest that we have, but you have to answer this question. If both of you were stranded on a desert island and you can only take one, one book with you, what would it be? Just one. <laughs> Get some every time. Stevie Wonder songs, Nikki Alive. <laughs> That's a good book. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a, I don't even think you're gonna like my answer, but I'm gonna I'm take prophets with me, prophets of the hood with me, cause it, cause it, cause it, cause it, cause it got me. It got it, it, it got me. It, it, it just, it just got me. Uh, it got me through when, when I moved up north. It, 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 it got me through. So. Things that get you over, you should bring with you. Yeah. Can I say something really quickly about that? Oh, yeah, sure. Something? <laughs> because this is, I keep talking, I've, I've been rereading Jack Witten's um, uh, Notes from the Woodshed. And I read it, and he keeps, say, he keeps talking about these moments where he's like, ah, I didn't get the Guggenheim again. Ah, I don't have enough money for paint. I'm, I'm broke, right? And, it, and I'm trying to figure out why I need it so much right now. Part of it is this, right? Because people did not like that book. Lots of people didn't like that book. Right? I've had a lot of, and people, and also many people acted like it didn't exist. Like you have a whole body of books on hip hop that will never mention right. that book. And at a, certain, I, a maturity allowed me to understand that didn't matter because it mattered to you or to somebody right and that that's the thing that an art artist have to figure out like it's not <laughs> you don't write to be the most popular sometimes that happens right but that's not why you do it that's no. not why you find your voice no and, and i'll just say one more thing about that book is is that you know i've said this before to you but um I think it's cliche sometimes for us to be like, we don't deserve imani perry you know or people be like we don't deserve jasmine ward but 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 the ill thing is, like, we actually do deserve Imani Perry. You know what I'm saying? Like, we really deserve, we really deserve Imani Perry. And what we also deserve, in addition to beautiful sentences, is we deserve books that take the craft of making oneself and making art out of the art that has made oneself seriously. I'm telling you, y'all, 
to my estimation. There's, there's not a more important craft book out there for the makings of what I consider like a black Southern artist than Prophets of the Hood. Like you, you, when you were talking about reunion, you were talking about, you were using words that I'd only seen used to describe in, 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 in other craft books, but you were actually like, like actually taking it deeper. You were talking about the ways that we made theology out of a style. Not just a sound, but a style. And so, so for me, it's like if I take myself seriously as a writer, I need to go on that island or whatever with the craft book that took us most seriously as writers. And for me, that, that craft book is called Prophets of the Hood. Yeah. Okay. Here's my question. Welcome to Delaware. I'm right here. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, a, a very southern north, northern state. Um, and I will tell you that there are parts of Delaware that I am afraid to drive in late at night. Um, and that's just the way it is. I, and I come from a family where my mother always says, whenever they left home, they went north. She didn't even find the school that she ended up going to, Delaware State, which is in Dover. She had never been there until she stepped foot on the campus as a freshman because her family always went north. So my question is, in your writings, have you all spent any time writing about Delaware? So I haven't, but I will say two really quick things. One, I, I think that there's something about Delaware that needs to be understood to understand the work that Brian Stevenson has done in Montgomery. Mm. Wow. Um, wow. Yes, yeah. Yes. And that connection, and that hasn't been so. He'll he's he's talked about Delaware, but we don't talk about it as the foundation for his and his experience in segregated schools and and the like. I'll also say that this is just an aside, but I have written not pri not public. I write. I have hypergraphia, so I write stuff every day that doesn't ever see the world, thank God. <laughs> Although the one, oh, Kansas is the only person who's ever seen my fiction, which is like when we first knew each other, and it was about the new African People's Organization, right? So that's it, like a whole other story, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we're just part of it about, right? <laughs> um, but I, I stopped, there's this whole, like, you know, Martha's Vineyard thing in Massachusetts in particular, right? And I used to go to Martha's Vineyard all the time, and I got really sick of it when it felt increasingly sort of classist and elitist, and I started to go to Rehoboth instead. And part of the reason I, want, I like to go to Rehoboth is because it felt very multi-class, and it felt like a place that could be multiracial, right? Um, and then I read uh, West of Rehoboth, the novel by Alexis Pate, which was about mm. sort of the history of race in, in, in Delaware in part. And I was like, oh, okay. So I had created this image of this place for myself that I didn't really understand the back story of it so um so it's not so i actually know is my answer but also i know there's a lot there yeah I'm, i mean i i i need to <laughs> i need to i don't know what it is. i need to write more about delaware you know I, 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 they, they 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 let me tell you why not not just because i was invited here but um he's moving here i want to encourage y'all to go to jackson mississippi yes. and, and ask yourself besides the potholes like if it feels <laughs> like this i was in that in the hotel last night and i got there late and you know we all had masks on and i'm you know tr you know walking or you know, walking slowly through the, through the joint and then um uh, uh a young person who like a brother was like pushing a mop and he was like cuz and i was <laughs> like what up? You know, we got on mask, and I was like, he was like, "Cuz," and I was like, "What's up, Cuz?" And then, um, and I had on a Cavaliers hat at the time, and he was like, "None, Cuz. I just want to say, what's up, Cavaliers?" And I was just like, I think about words all the time, like, and I'm just like, that was a that that interaction, like, was something that I I literally have only experienced anything like in Mississippi. Like, because he called me cuz, he called me cuz another time, and then he called me Cavaliers. And that, and, that, and that might not make sense to anybody in the audience, but that's why I feel like there's something, there's something about this space that we're in, this is right down the block, that feels like Jackson. But I'm not, I'm not nearly versed in this place enough to be like, it is. But it feels like it. It feels like home in a way that, um, that, I, that I appreciate. But I've never, it's like my second time being here, so I've never written about it. So.
<laughs> well, thank you all very much. Um, they're going to uh, these two great people are going to stay behind and sign your sign your books. Uh, we have them for sale. Um, so, if if you two could just make your way to the great table here. Um, Thank you so much. A great, con great conversation. Thank you all for coming. Hello everyone, this is Bakari Sellers. I am a commentator at CNN and even more importantly, I'm a new children's book author of Who Are Your People? As we know, February begins Black History Month and with the beginning of Black History Month and the celebrate at the Wilmington Public Library, we'll be giving away free copies of my book, Who Are Your People? It's a book of inspiration. It's a book of hope. It teaches us to be proud of who we are and the representation and the images on the pages is dynamic. Also, February 17th, I will be there with the one and only Ernest Green, a legendary civil rights icon who still walks among us. We have to give people their flowers while they are living. Of the Little Rock Nine, he is one of the nine individuals who helped to desegregate Little Rock Central High School in 1957. So join me in Delaware in person at 6 p.m. on February 17th for this amazing event. And don't forget to bring your mask. February 1st, you can start picking up this book, Who Are Your People? I look forward to seeing you all very soon. And shout out to the Wilmington Public Library. Hello, Wilmington. I'm singer-songwriter Kenny Lattimore. You may know me from my song. For you, I'd give a lifetime of stability. All I do is for you. Well, first I'd like to wish the Wilmington Public Library a very happy 100th birthday. I want you, though, to come out and join me at the Wilmington Public Library in Wilmington, Delaware, for their Dancing with the Stars 100th Anniversary Gala on Friday, March the 4th at 6 p.m. All you have to do, register for the event below, okay? I'll see you there.